Part 18 of Rebuilding a Large Clarkson Single Cylinder Vertical Steam Engine. This one is Reassembly and Problems, just for a change. The usual problems, there are lots of problems on this engine. And at the moment you're looking at the crosshead, and of course in common with every part that you reassemble on an engine, you must lubricate it first. I was going to make a new gudgeon pin, but since I fixed the bearing this is quite a good fit, and I like to keep things original, unless they're really bad. And if you've been watching the series, there have been many bad parts on this engine that I've been replacing. Now it's starting to come together though, I've just screwed the piston rod into the crosshead. Not forgetting to apply some oil to the gland nut. I've got a sneaking feeling there's going to be a problem with this gland nut, because it's slightly larger than the original, in as much as there's some graphited yarn in the stuffing box, so it's held further out. It needs to be like this to make it adjustable. The original gland nut, the one without the adjusting slots, was screwed all the way into the stuffing box at the bottom of the cylinder cover. And of course the stuffing box did not have any graphited yarn in it, so I think that something's going to foul when I turn this engine over. I'll give it a try. Without the crankshaft fitted, the piston goes up and down. The rod's a nice smooth fit on the gland, not too tight and not too slack. And it's time to do a test fit of the crankshaft. I'm making a mixture of machine oil and steam oil, which seems to be quite a good lubricant really. I'm fitting the bearings temporarily, and I'm going to assemble it. Not only is this quite a fiddly job, I do not want to mark the paint, and of course as you can see here, I forgot to lubricate the big end. Anyway, the big end's lubricated and everything's in place, apart from this collar, and of course the eccentrics and the flywheel. But I'll do that when I finally assemble the engine. This is just a very, very temporary fit. I want to see what happens when I turn the engine over. Well, this is quite encouraging. The only bad thing is, when the crosshead is at the top of its stroke, it lifts the cylinder cover up. This is not acceptable, no good at all. All I had to do with this was remove some material from the crosshead to make the crosshead slightly shorter. I didn't want to modify the gland nut, because that's great. It's in there, it's going to allow adjustment of the gland, and it works fine. And to say the engine is so loosely assembled, everything feels okay. I think I can even put the cylinder in place and make sure that everything lines up. I would like to apologise to the viewer who wrote in and said he didn't like it when I was making a joke about people with mental disorders, as he'd had a mental disorder for many years. And just to set the record straight, I've had a mental disorder for many years. I used to be a musician, but I'm alright now, and I still take the tablets. And the good news is, the cylinder fits very well, and the piston goes up and down, and everything's looking okay on this engine now. There's still a bit more work to do, everything's loose on the crankshaft, but what I will do is put it together with the flywheel, so you can see what it's going to look like, approximately. There's a tiny bit more painting to show when I paint the bearing caps, there's a bit more machining to show when I make the drop lever that moves the valve gear, and then of course assembly of the valve gear and the entire engine. And talking about mental disorders, I did a questionnaire once on the ADHD Society website. And on this questionnaire it said, if you score more than 11, you have serious adult ADHD. I actually answered all the questions as truthfully as possible, and went off the scale with a score of 24, which was the theoretical maximum. And what's more, to make things worse, my wife bought a metal plaque that she hangs in the kitchen, and it says on it in large letters, my next husband will be normal. Thanks, Thanks for, watching, for watching, and I hope you found, found it useful. useful.